Hey everyone, today I am actually in my trailer because both boys are sleeping in the living room. They're napping, so I figured I'd come out here. And this is my other cat, Harley. So this is Holly's brother. And I thought I'd bring him in here. This is the first time he's been in here. So um, we're trying to get, we have to get them used to the trailer. Because if we do go camping this year, we're going to be going for like at a week's time. Um, and we'll be bringing them with us. So that should be interesting. Two cats, two kids, and a dog. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. So today I'm here to talk about um, post-surgery basically. Uh, I just wanted to start basically from what happened um, with my miscarriage and then go into basically my surgery and all that. So I'll just start off from the day um, that things started happening. Um, which was Thursday morning I started spotting and this may be graphic this video please please click off or just skip ahead or whatever but um, throughout this video it may be kind of graphic so if you don't like blood or anything gory please click off this video so basically what happened was on Thursday morning, I started spotting. This was last Thursday, not the Thursday that just passed. Um, this was last Thursday. And what happened was I started spotting, and it was like the brownie colored blood. Um, and it was literally just spots of blood um, throughout the next four days. We went shopping on the Saturday and we did quite a bit of walking. My doctor had told me to rest, um, but I needed to go out that day and get some things done. So we went out that day and we actually ended up looking at couches um, and we didn't make our final decision, decision that day, but the next day we had to go back again and the closest area to us was like an hour and a half away. So. Once again, that was quite a bit of walking that day. That was on the Sunday. And I just felt um, very worn down after that trip. Um, on the way back, I even said to Kyle, like, I think I did too much walking. I got home. We all kind of just rested. And I was very, very crampy. Um, it was all lower cramps. Very... Um, very strong period cramps so I knew that I was bleeding a little bit more that morning um, but it was still closer to like a spotting so I was bleeding a little bit more but when we got home and I felt all this cramping I could tell that I was like bleeding heavily and it was only about a half hour to an hour of being home and I was sitting in a chair the whole time um, in the rocking chair and I soaked through my pad and my underwear and my pants so that was within an hour and for the last four days I hadn't had any bleeding whatsoever or just spotting so I went to the toilet after I realized like I was completely soaked and I sat on the toilet and of course my pad was completely soaked um, but then I felt myself pass like clots or like big globs of something. I'm pretty sure it was at least one clot about this big um, that came out of me, which is quite concerning. We actually called Telehealth Canada um, just to see if I should go in or if I should wait because um, my doctor said to go into the emergency room um, if there was a lot of bleeding but I didn't know how much was too much. We called Telehealth and they asked a bunch of questions and we kind of you know explained like I was okay, I didn't have a fever, I wasn't shaking, I didn't lose any um, feeling in any of my like body parts but they suggested to go in within the hour. So after that, we basically got, well, Kyle got things together, got the kids in bed, because this was at about nine o'clock at night now. My parents were actually at my uncle's, so they were about an hour away from us or the hospital. 
So we called them. They were going to meet us at the hospital and then Kyle's father was going to come watch the kids for us um, while we went to the hospital. We put like a towel on, down in Kyle's truck just in case I wouldn't bleed and I actually wore a Depends underwear all the way to the hospital. Um, I get free samples for Michaela all the time for Depends just because I know we're going to need them in the future for her. Um, so I actually had a pair of Depends on. Uh, I figured why not use it and we have them and there's no sense soaking through my pants in that before I get to the hospital. So I put those on and we went into triage, waited, the telehealth already faxed over my information from my call to the hospital so they already knew that I was coming which was awesome. Um, they kind of knew what was going on and I didn't really have to explain the story over again. So I talked to the triage nurse, she did my blood pressure, she did my um, my temperature, my blood pressure was 138 over 80 or 90 I believe and normally it's like anywhere from 1 to 112 to 120 so it was high and then basically I had to wait to register um, which is so stupid because I was just there on the Friday getting blood work um, and they took me into like the emergency rooms and I had to wait for oh my gosh probably an hour and or more and I soaked through the Depends underwear um, however the nurse wanted me to go to the washroom and um, pee into like the containers they have for the toilets they're called a toilet hat I believe so I had to do that and when I sat down again like globs of stuff came out and when I looked I had one big clot and then I had like what looked like flesh um, it looked like um, I don't even know how to explain it other than a molar pregnancy is basically just masses in your uterus um, that end up being like little balls um, that are filling your uterus so that's what it looked like. It looked like little balls of flesh that were like combined into like a whole ball like this and that's what I had passed. So the nurse looked at it of course and then I went back to the room and the doctor finally came in and he said okay how much bleeding are you having? Um, we'll check like we'll check you and see how much bleeding you have so that we know to keep you or not. Um, and I just basically said to him like yeah you're gonna keep me so what happened was I had to undress and of course I'm like bleeding everywhere so I had to get on the bed um, and they had like a paper sheet down and I could feel when, once I sat down I passed something else either blood or like a clot or um, another mass and so the doctor came in and he's like, okay, we're gonna check you. Um, and he used the clamps to open me to see if they could see anything. Well, because there was so much blood, they couldn't see anything. So he had to check me manually with his fingers. Um, and he just basically said like, oh, there's a lot of blood and we're gonna have to basically keep you overnight. It's like, well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I could have told you that. So once the eMERGE doctor left, the nurse, um, he told her to take my blood as well as start an IV um, because I hadn't eaten anything since I think 3 o'clock, 3.30 that day, um, which I knew I didn't feel like eating anyways, but when I found that I was bleeding at like 6 o'clock heavily, I didn't eat anything from then on because I wasn't sure if they were going to take me in or not so I didn't want to eat anything and risk aspirating for surgery. She took my blood and then she put an IV in. We were moved to a actual admitting room uh, where we my parents were actually able to come in then and we just hung out for a while. Um, I got started on IV fluids they were pumping it into me at a very quick rate because um, I was probably dehydrated um, I hadn't even drank anything. And it was just time to go down for the night, try and get some rest. Uh, they were going to call my gynecologist in the morning and see what she wanted to do. Kyle was actually able to get a bed chair 
and I was able to sleep in the hospital bed, obviously. So Kyla got a good night's sleep, and I was up every time the nurse came in. Luckily, I still got some sleep, which was really nice, and before we knew it, it was 2 o'clock in the morning, and then by the time we woke up, it was 8 o'clock in the morning. The nurse came in in the morning, and she got me to sign the paperwork for a DNC, just in case uh, my gynecologist was going to come in that morning. Sure enough, two minutes later or so, she comes in and says, okay, your gynecologist is going to be here soon, they're going to take you right away. And I was like, whoa, okay, like, isn't the doctor going to come see me or what? But she had already scheduled my DNC, so it's not like we had to discuss it or anything. Like, it was just an automatic thing. So I believe it was 9 o'clock in the morning by the time I went in. Um, they wheeled me over to day surgery. I was in a gown. I had no shaved legs, no shave, nothing. And I just remember saying to the, the nurses and all the assistants and that, and I'm like, sorry for my unshaved legs, guys. Uh, it's really flattering. <laughs> and they all just laughed and they're like, oh, it's still winter or whatever. And it, it was kind of like just to lighten the mood a little bit. But I really wish I could have had my legs shaved. <laughs> Would have been a lot nicer, but um, it was just an emergency thing and that's what happened. So... I ended up walking into the operating room and I had to lay down. So I laid on the bed and I had to move up on the bed a little bit. My arms were out on like braces or like tables and I remember them strapping me in I believe um, and when I moved up onto the bed they removed the end of the bed, the end section and it was nothing. So my legs were up um, like to give birth basically they put your legs into um, holders and then what I remember from there was not much but I remember the I believe it was a nurse he said you're gonna feel a little you're probably gonna feel a little bit of stinging in your IV and I said okay that's fine I don't remember actually feeling the sting but two seconds later because they had put the oxygen mask on me already um, they just said this is just a bit of oxygen and then after he said that I remember them putting a tube into my oxygen mask and I was looking up the uh, at the bright lights and I felt myself like start to get woozy and then it was like I was out <laughs> I was completely out and it was almost like I remember feeling woozy but I'm like okay I gotta stay awake I gotta stay awake um, but it was so weird because like you don't even realize you're going it's just like so quick. The other one thing I think I remember happening before I went like completely out was someone saying something about like putting a bucket underneath me or um, something to catch the fluids or something. That's what I remember. I don't know if that's actually true or if I was just imagining that but that's what I remember before I was out cold. <laughs> so obviously I don't remember anything while I was out. Uh, but when I woke up, I remember feeling very, very, very tired and I just wanted to like keep sleeping. But I knew I was in a room full of like patients. There was another bed beside me, but no one in it. And then there was a bed beside me on this side and there was a man in it and he was speaking to his nurse already. He was talking. Um, and then across the room there was another patient um, still out cold. So the other things I wanted to mention um, for my like symptoms afterwards, I wrote them down because I didn't want to forget them like in the moment. So I remember when the nurse was kind of just starting to, actually she didn't even talk to me. I asked her a question like how long did the surgery take or something like that. But I remember trying to lift my head and I just felt nauseous. Like I just felt that feeling in my throat like I was going to throw up. Um, so that actually went away within probably 10 to 15 minutes um, when I wasn't drowsy anymore. That went away. Um, when I took a deep breath in, I felt like I was going to be sick. I had that feeling in my throat. That also went away within 15 minutes. Um, I had cramping like very bad while I was laying um, in recovery and then by the time I actually got over to the next room where they put you like while you were 
awake and like they give you um your snack and that um my cramping had mild out so it was probably 10 minutes and my cramping had already lessened and then of course the cramping was gone within like 15 to 20 minutes um the bleeding i had when i went to the washroom before i got dressed was very close to like a period blood i had three tiny tiny little clots of blood um but it was basically like a period blood and when i went over to the next room they gave me digestive cookies i believe and some apple juice they asked me when i was wheeling over to there what kind of juice i wanted and i asked for apple juice at that point i didn't feel like eating whatsoever because i had that nauseous still nausea still um but i knew that they weren't going to let me leave unless i actually ate it and drank that apple juice apple juice however when i was actually eating them it went down pretty good i was shocked like when i started eating it and having a drink i was like okay i could use some more apple juice please um but i knew that was all they were gonna give me that was pretty much it for the symptoms after surgery it, they were very mild i was very shocked at how uh quickly i recovered and kyle came in saw me and we were basically told okay you can go get dressed and be on your way it was like holy 20 minutes after surgery and i'm out the door like it was unbelievable how quick like they were pushing people out so well in my case I don't know other people were probably in longer but Kyle went and got me some clothes I went in the washroom and I got dressed and changed my pad and we were off we were on our way home I was fine all the way home I just felt tired of course because you're still like drowsy a bit um I got home I wanted something to eat they gave me a sheet saying like all my instructions after like for post care and basically they just said to eat lightly when your first meal um, so I had an English muffin with some margarine on it and that was it um, actually I had a couple cheesies probably shouldn't have had those but that's okay I enjoyed them so my parents were at my house at that time because my father-in-law had to go to work and they had to feed Michaela and get Damien up and everything. So I believe I was home by 11.30. My surgery was at 9. Um, it takes us 40 minutes to get home. So that goes to show you how quick it was. I know with my scheduled DNC, they had the room booked for precisely 26 minutes. So it shouldn't have taken that long in the OR. And when I asked the nurse how long it took, she said 15, 20 minutes. So it just felt like forever and i just remember feeling like it's so weird because your body goes through this surgery but you don't feel like you've been through surgery it's just it's the weirdest thing anyways um so yeah i got home i had my english muffin and i went to bed by like 12 30 and i slept right until i want to say 4 35 o'clock at night and I got up and I don't even remember what we had for dinner that night, but I was able to have pretty much a full meal. And then I went back to bed after uh, Damien was down. So it was a very, very simple, um, non-complicated surgery. Um, everything went fairly well, I would say. Not many symptoms, just in the first, those first 10 minutes or so were the worst symptoms after um, post-surgery. So, I mean, it was a fairly good experience, I would say. Um, I was happy that they didn't keep me any longer than they did because I just wanted to go home. As of right now, we are, today is Sunday and I had my surgery on Monday morning. So we're almost a week into post-surgery um, and I feel great. I don't have any bleeding today from the couple days afterwards I did bleed um, it was more of just spotting and less than a period um, yesterday and today I've had no bleeding um, and no cramping uh, the my symptoms have been minimal and I'm pretty much feeling back to myself so everything's a good I'm supposed to see my doctor uh, in two weeks or a week from now I'll do that and then I can update you from there but Hopefully that's all for this little journey that we had to go through. Next we'll be obviously doing blood work for six months to a year 
and more of the emotional journey that we've been on. I wanted to talk to talk a little bit about that because I feel like I'm um, not the s statistic type of person. Um, I haven't felt, and I don't want this to come off the wrong way because I mean, um, when you lose a child, it is sad no matter what. Um, for people who have been trying to get pregnant and they've had many, many miscarries, I feel for those people so much. Um, however, in my case, I have known what it's like to actually almost lose a child that is living um, versus a miscarry. And I just want to say in my experience, and my experience only, this is probably just the way I feel and not like many other people. But I had my one night of grieving. I cried. I was sad. I was upset that I wasn't going to have this baby. Um, I, I knew I'd be sad when my due date comes around and I'm not giving birth. Um, I knew it was a sad thing. However, I didn't hold on to that grieving process or sadness. I knew that this was something that was meant to be, it was meant to happen this way, we were meant to lose this child because of a reason, whatever that reason may be. And I just felt like it wasn't that sad of a process for me. Um, and I don't want that to come off as like I'm heartless or um, not a good mother because I mean I love my children to death. I'm, I'm still upset, of course, that I'm not having a child. We did plan this pregnancy. Um, I just know the difference between giving birth to a child and almost losing that child versus a miscarry. And I'm not saying that's the same for everyone. You can have a child and maybe lose that child and have a miscarry and lose that child. Um, but for me, I just wasn't... Um, I didn't get to that depressing state, which I'm thankful for. Um, we're thankful for the experience that we've gone through this. We're thankful for knowing that we were um, hoping to have a child. We were thankful for my body actually giving up the pregnancy eventually. And just moving on from here, we're thankful that this has happened and we know there's going to be a reason for it. We may not understand that right now. But there are bigger and better things for us right now and we will have another child eventually. And if I don't have another child, I'm blessed with two beautiful children. So I'm very lucky in that case. Um, again, I don't want that to come off heartless because yes, I was sad. We, we lost a child. Um, but I just didn't hold on to that sadness. And we, we now see it as we're thankful for it and we've accepted it and we, we're moving on. So of course, always when, you know, the, my due date's gonna come around, I am gonna think that day. I could have been having a child right now. But I know during that day also that I'll know why this happened. There'll be something that has gone on that has shown us why we couldn't have this child right now. So I just wanted to explain that because I'm sure there are a few of you out there that have felt the same way and maybe you feel alone in that instance. Um, I know I feel almost alone saying that um, because you're supposed to feel sadness but I think people grieve in different ways and I think they handle it different ways and everything everyone has been through something different just like we've been through different things with Michaela and we've almost lost her so I think it just all depends on the person and if you are feeling sad I totally understand and I'm so sorry um, that you have had this experience. I mean, it doesn't take away from it at all. And I wish everyone in the best for the future. If you've had a miscarry, I hope you have either had a child already or are able to get pregnant and have another child or have a child. Anyone who's out there, there's all different emotions that you're able to feel and we're human. We're, we're not all the same. We can feel different things and we just get through it the way we need to get through it. So anyways, I hope you all learned something from this video. If you have, 
please give this video a thumbs up. Um, if this video has helped you in any ways, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, always please leave them in the comments below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.